guys, my name is Leila Sofia. I'm an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, and I have some fun videos for you. I just made a list, if you guys haven't seen, I'll link it below, of bag styles that I think are completely underrated. Let me know what your thoughts are on that, and I thought to answer that, I wanted to cause some controversy and do my list of bag styles that I think are totally overrated, but don't worry, I'm not going to leave you high and dry. I'm going to give you alternatives that I think are, let's just say, a little bit less seen, a little bit less known, a little bit less overdone. This is not saying that they're underrated at all. Some of the alternatives I have are like totally out there. I just think that they might be a little bit cooler of a choice. If you guys are new here, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so excited to see you in all my future videos, so make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Layla Sophia Jewelry, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. We're just gonna jump in with the one that's gonna be most controversial, I already know. We know that I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Hermes, but sometimes the way that people do it can be, I think, not what Hermes is trying to promote. So something like the Mini Kelly is my first one. The Mini Kelly is obviously such a beautiful, beautiful bag. Do I think that it's gorgeous? Do I think that you can absolutely use it? I've seen people like Karen Britchick, I think maybe even has two. She's like, it is so useful. She uses it all the time. Apparently it actually holds more than it seems like it does, but for someone like me, and if you're at all like me and watching my videos, so maybe that means that, I just, it, oh, I've seen it everywhere. Every single influencer, every single creator, honestly, just even on the streets of the city, there's so many people with it. So instead, of course, if you have Hermes budget and this is like top, top, top on your list, I would go for a Kelly Pochette. This is a dream bag of mine. I hope to one day in the next couple years maybe tick this off of my list. It's so beautiful. It seems like it fits more and it just seems a little bit kind of cooler. It is a John Paul Gaultier style. I'm doing a whole video, I promise it's coming, on underrated, vintage, and just like lesser known Hermes bag styles. This isn't lesser known at all, but John Paul Gaultier just did such amazing work for the brand. I know that there's no shoulder strap, but there are plenty of videos as to how you can kind of DIY a shoulder strap if that's important to you. Oh, it's so good. But I have a new one for you guys as well. If you love the mini crossbody option, the Celine Mini 16 bag has made it to the top of my list. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. Need I say more? It's so beautiful. It comes in so many different varieties, so many different colors. It's Hedy Slimane's first bag for Celine, so it's meaningful. I think it's a little bit less prevalent than the Triumph bags, and it will give you that kind of day to evening cool vibe that the Mini Kelly will give you. Again, I think at this point, so many people are of the same vein as me. Chanel classic flaps are obviously so amazing. They're timeless, they're classic. If someone gifted me one, sure, I'll take it. But the price increases, the kind of teetering down of the quality, overrated. I wouldn't recommend, unless you just have complete, you know, no worries about the price or about the quality and you just love a Chanel classic lap. I know so many people like, this is their brand. It's a thing. This is who they're gonna stick with. I would only personally buy vintage Chanel. I have only personally bought vintage Chanel, but I have some 
alternate. So as I just mentioned, Celine, here are my thoughts. And I, I think other creatives have kind of hinted at this, but Celine is being so genius and brilliant right now because they see what's happening at Chanel, that Chanel is trying to like, in their classic styles, compete directly with Hermes. They've said that out loud. That's a thing. Celine is like, I know that you might be losing some clients. You might be losing some longtime clients. I'm here to pick up the slack. Celine, Hedy Celine, genius. I think we all were so sad when Phoebe Philo left. Phoebe Philo is coming out with her own brand, September 2023. We're ready, we're waiting for that. More on that later. But the way that Hedy Celine now has been going with the brand is just too genius. The Triumph, the 16, so many bag styles. They still do have the luggage. There are so many styles that they're like, great. If you don't want to buy a $9,000 Chanel classic flap, come over to Celine with your $4,000 that you were saving a couple of years ago and you can have a huge variety of bags. Have amazing, impeccable quality. We've got color options for you. We've got strap options for you, classic old, vintage, timeless styles. I think it's pretty brilliant. As an alternative though, if you're a minimal, quiet luxury, old money aesthetic person, check out the Rose Sophia bag. Yes, I've talked about this so much. I'm so sorry if you're a seasoned subscriber. You know that I'm obsessed. Just get the bag already. We know that. But also the Clea bag. That would be perfect. If you're looking for classic flat territory, you want it to hold a lot, you want a shoulder option, you want kind of minimal branding, classic styles, the Row Clea bag is purely underrated and so gorgeous. And I think a lot of people know this, but the Dior saddle bag, quite frankly, Dior is not my vibe. I think that it's really beautiful and I really, I'm, I'm trying because I'm looking for vintage styles I'm looking for something to grab onto, but it's just not as much my vibe, and that's totally okay. But the saddlebags, I love the shape of, again, if we're talking vintage styles, that doesn't even count. Those are amazing. Go off, find one, live your life, have the dopest outfits, perfect. But the new saddlebags, Sometimes brands do too much when they're like, oh, the vintage ones are being purchased. Let's go ahead and revive them, do a whole moment. And it kind of just becomes, let's just call them overrated at this point. I'm gonna go with a bag <laughs> as an alternative that might soon become overrated and I hope not. Very, very similar thing happened. A vintage style, people started buying vintage styles. I have a vintage one that I got for $300. The Gucci Jackie bag is a great alternative. And I actually think it might be what Dior lovers who kind of are over the saddlebag are going to. The Gucci Jackie is so beautiful. The quality is insane. You have size options, you have color options, you have leather choice options, crossbody, shoulder. It's timeless, it's classic. It's an amazing choice. Okay, another one. I hope people don't hate me for this one. I'm sorry. But uh, the Celine, I think, do you say Cabas? Cabas? The Celine kind of classic tote bag. I, ju I just was saying how much I love Celine. But this one, eh. like, first of all, just from Celine, there are such better options. But as an alternative, I actually love the Kate Lotus bags. If you're looking for something just like clearly sleek, but then there's like a little bit of happening with an extra tie and a whatnot, check out Kate as a whole, but the Lotus bags seem beautiful. They're sleek, they're minimal, but obviously such a different shape and style. And it's just gonna totally elevate your look. Bottega, we know I love. I love, I've invested in Bottega, but I've never gone for the mini Jody because I just think they're overdone. Again, every influencer, every YouTuber, every person on the street, they honestly do have a very good luxury price point. 
They're so pretty. If you're not going to go for a larger size, I have an alternative for you. So this is an alternative <laughs> that's not going to give you exactly the same thing, but it's so cool. This is the Bottega Bandana Foulard bag. I've talked about this already. It's not even out yet, but I'm giving you the insider scoop. I, I saw one at Bottega, my amazing sales associate showed me one. The foulard is, first of all, it's like this buttery, very, very thin leather. So underneath the like, there's two, the bandana, right? There's two kind of like flaps of leather and then underneath is the actual pocket of the bag, very comparable to the mini Jody size. So you're getting still mini bag territory but it's cool, it's edgy, it's fresh. Yes, we're going new Bottega versus new, new Bottega. It's just a cool option. Okay, I have some bonus ones that are not handbags because we're jewelry. I'm gonna give you some fragrances for interiors. My first one, I am not a Van Cleef fan. Van Cleef, vintage Van Cleef, don't even come for vintage Van Cleef. I love vintage Van Cleef. Beautiful. The original horoscope medallions, gorgeous. I'm talking new Van Cleef. I'm talking every influencer in the world has five Van Cleef vintage style bracelets. No. If you have been layering on these pieces. If you have your collection from your grandma, if you love, if you are a die-hard Van Cleef person, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking if you are just wanting to show your money and have a status symbol piece. Oh, please, please, please. There's so many brilliant, amazing contemporary jewelry designers. Watch my 20 fine jewelry designers you should know video, my minimal jewelry designers video. Oh, there are just so many. I've worked in the industry for 10 years. And it's like, I don't know, we always knew Cartier. We always knew Van Cleef as well. But the fact that I really truly think everybody's kind of just getting it just to get it, just because it looks expensive. And I don't actually think it looks expensive because so many people have it. The stones are very delicate. You cannot wear them all the time. You need to be very careful in water, in heat. It's just not, let's just be honest, it's not worth the price. So I have, of course I'm gonna bring you some alternatives. Again, watch my videos, I'll put them down below, of the 20 fine jewelry designers you should know options because any one of them, anyone, pick anyone other than Van Cleef. But for me, I debated very heavily on who to put as my alternate. Go Harwell Godfrey, because if you love Van Cleef for the color aspects, she has that. If you love Van Cleef for the motif aspects, she has that. If you love Van Cleef for the stone aspects, she has that. She has everything that Van Cleef has with not as recognizable motifs and not as delicate. Of course, some pieces with major, huge, kind of softer stones, of course, be careful. Always listen to the designer and what they recommend, but oh, please just check her out. She's so amazing. She will tick off all those boxes without being overdone and without being too well known. For fragrance, again, my fragrance video is coming soon. And the title will be something along with Don't Buy Baccarat Rouge 540, okay? It's lovely. I literally had a client the year it came out, they worked in the industry, and she would come to see me, and I would be like, what are you wearing? It was the best smell, it was so amazing. Maison Francis Kirchen is an incredible, incredible house. You know what I'm about to say. When the entirety of Soho smells like Baccarat Rouge 540, it's time to put it away. It's no longer cool. It's become the new Santal 33, which I hated anyways. A house like Lavabo and a house like MFK, are you kidding me? These 
fragrant houses are beyond brilliant. Look up Gentle Fluidity Gold, look up Oud Satin Mood. Like there are just such better Grand Soir, <laughs> such better fragrances from that house alone. But quite frankly, even those have gotten such overdone, ugh. Instead, I'm scared to make this fragrance known. Not that you can't just walk into a Celine store and get it, but the Celine Black Tie fragrance is such a better choice. It will give you that sweet aspect. It will give you that yummy, kind of just like homey, comforting aspect. And it gives you the unisex aspect. I haven't seen as many people talk specifically about black tie. Go for that if you want an if you know you know type of fragrance. Don't buy Baccarat Rouge 540. And lastly, for my last, I'm realizing every single piece on this list is controversial. I've already said this though, Cartier loves, she says as she's wearing Cartier Just on Chloe. Yes, I love the nail bracelets, but the love collection just kind of like in general. Again, if you've been collecting these for 15 years and you're just such a huge fan and it's meaningful and you got your husband to screw it on you and yada, 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 lovely. Honestly, again, please, there are so many amazing contemporary fine jewelry designers who would love to see you in their pieces instead. For this, I nobody would be more perfect than to Bayer. I've already said I have one or two pieces on my own list. To Bayer has just created a beyond gorgeous, unique, yet simple and wearable collection. I'm saying this because I get it, the Cartier motifs, I get it. You want to have kind of like, ooh, I'm building my collection with very similar cohesive motifs. To Bayer did that for you. They're so gorgeous. They have diamond options, they have size options, thin and thicker, some in between, some with kind of sparkling, dripping down diamonds. They will give you some bangle and ring options. Please check out To Bayer. That has been my overrated picks. Let me know your thoughts because I realize, as I've said a thousand times already, these are some controversial items. I'm so excited to see you guys in all of my future videos. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel, like this video, follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Layla Sophia Jewelry, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye guys.